from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello everyone, and welcome to Ropecast, the lighthearted podcast for learners of English. I'm Peter Tischer. And I'm Roger Charlton. Hello Roger, how Hello, are you doing? Peter. Fine, thank you. And you? I'm fine, thank you. Peter, um, I do remember the last time we met... Yeah. You, I, I mentioned this expression, the best thing since sliced bread, or the greatest thing since sliced bread, and you said there's a story behind it. Actually, it's kind of a surprise that you use that expression, because apparently it comes from the United States. Uh -huh. Because there's no real proof to this, but apparently somewhere around 1928, uh, a person by the name of Otto Frederick Rohwedder who probably was German, <laughs> invented an automatic bread slicing machine. Uh -huh. And he advertised it as, I quote, the greatest forward step in the baking industry since bread was wrapped. Uh -huh. Okay. And so people apparently took that slogan up and say, okay, after slicing bread, there's got to be a next step. <laughs> But of course, this expression is used ironically yes, today, mostly, yeah. mostly at least. So if something is new, but, you know, not a huge step forward, yeah. uh, you'll say, yeah, that's the greatest thing, <laughs> sliced bread, right? Well, perhaps because the person involved thinks it's really, really good. Right. And, and we are a little skeptical about it. Right. That's, that's it. But <laughs> I think it's a neat expression yeah. anyway. <laughs> yeah, there are, it's not surprising bread is so central to our lives that there are a number of expressions. Yeah, there are quite a few, aren't there? Yeah, yeah. A bread and butter issue, for example. Something very basic. Yeah, because fundamental. we eat bread and butter, right? Yeah. Or, you can um, also say a bread and butter product, which is the product oh, yeah. that a company sells most often and makes a lot of money out of. Yeah. I'm talking about making money, an individual might say, this is my bread and butter, meaning mm -hmm. the main way in which I earn my money. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right, so definitely. That, yeah, that's all very, very central. Um, well, since Roman times, we've had bread and circuses, haven't we? <laughs> right, right. We've had that, although it's not used as often anymore. Or is it in Britain? I think it's, you know, probably depends a little bit on the level of education, things like that. Uh -huh. yeah. Right. Yeah. But there's not only bread, you know, there's also cake. True. Yeah. So I would, for example, if I would say, okay, this is really the last step in something... Uh, that takes the cake. Oh, it takes the biscuit. You would say that takes the biscuit? Yeah. No, I would definitely, in America, they say that takes the cake. All right. Well, of course, okay. biscuit means different things mm -hmm. in the US and the UK anyway. Mm -hmm. True enough. Yeah. Um, which leads us to the other extreme. If you're really just surviving, uh -huh. you know, hardly enough to eat and so on, you're on the bread line. I haven't heard that one. That uh -huh. means... Making just making ends meet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Does that come from the line that you form when people <sighs> hand out bread to the poor? I have no idea. It, it would make sense, you know. The, yeah. The, the, yeah. How there are lines when you? Yeah, could be. Do you know the one to know which side your bread is buttered on? No, haven't uh, haven't heard that. Yeah. That means to know what is most advantageous for you personally ah, okay. or for your group or your family. You know what? Maybe that I don't know that because um, Americans usually don't use a lot of butter on their bread. So ah, yes. That what they will often take is, is something low cholesterol, margarine, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, you can't have your cake and eat it. Oh yeah, I know that <laughs> one. Um, do you sure? Are you sure that everybody understands that? Mm, I don't know. Well, we'd have to maybe explain. So, well, I, this basic decision: Are you going to originally? It's, are you going to keep something, or are you going to consume it now? Right. Like, are you going to save money, or are you going to spend it? But then it extends beyond that, doesn't it? Yeah, you can't really have only advantages. Yeah, there is always something bad or something a that downside. you have to spend or lose when you want something. Yeah. Oh, um, the icing on the cake? 
the icing on the cake. That's the very last special element yeah. that makes something perfect. Yes. Is that it? Yeah. Right. Again, I, I think I would, for the cake, I would call that frosting. But I think especially in that um, proverb, if you want to call it that, then I think everybody would say icing in the U.S. It's right. curious, isn't yeah. it? Is this something with cherry or am I making um, I think you can also say that's the cherry on the cake. Right. You know, how you put the, you have the icing and you put as a last element, you put a cherry on the top. Yeah. I always wanted more than one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's always a problem. Yeah. This is um, one of those places where there are some differences between British and American, American usage, but not so very many. No, I guess not, because um, it's all still very basic. Mm. It's basic food that everybody uses. Yeah. So the expressions are kind of similar. I think that expression was really the icing on the cake okay. of this episode, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, we'll finish it there. Okay. So, dear listeners, you'll hear another episode in two weeks. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. You've been listening to Ropecast. Brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.